What is up, everybody? Josh here again, and today we have an Icarus Week 77 update. This week, they've added two new creatures, one that's on my back and a new scorpion that spawns in the Arctic. They also added a preview of Galileo, which will be released next week. We have a ton of optimizations, guys, and I am getting buttery frames from it and so much more. This is a huge update, so let's get into it, shall we? So in this Icarus Week 77, performance and quality of life improvement increases. Number four, they've added performance improvements for the UI and lighting, a Galileo preview, and some new creatures, and added some early game quality of life improvements as well. They also increase the talent points that you get on your characters, and they have a video on the new Galileo patch dropping next week. So Icarus has reached out to us to do a collab and we are going to be doing an AMA and possibly a let's play with them. We have several questions we plan on asking them on the AMA, but we are asking the community if you have any questions or suggestions you'd like to let us know about. Post it in our Discord or post it on our community tab. Go to our community tab on the channel and the last post you'll see is the Icarus AMA Q&A. Down here we'll be able to hit comment and add your own comment. And there's a chance that your comment or question will be on the AMA and we'll be doing this next week guys so hopefully we'll see it on the channel next week huge shout out to Icarus for actually reaching out to us and asking our opinions also huge shout out to our YouTube members thank you so much KHX Wolfie Sergio thank and you. Sandy thank you so much for being part of the late night crew and for supporting our channel thank you so we got some lighting and shadows performance increases this week they're actively working on a few pain points that they've identified for AMD GPUs and lower end NVIDIA GPUs. And this week they are bringing some fixes that they hope will address this performance bottleneck. They are talking about the torch lag, guys. AMD torch lag. This week they added a light shadows option, which will incredibly impact the performance and sometimes up the double digit FPS numbers of the GPUs they've been internally testing. So light shadows for AMD GPUs will be turned off by default and you can turn them off if you're an NVIDIA user manually. Once you go to settings and display, you'll scroll down under quality and you'll see light shadows for NVIDIA users such as myself. It is already on, but you can manually turn it off. For AMD users, it is off by default. If you'd like to turn it on, you can. And it does say this can have a big performance impact. They've also added a setting for skybox detail. And this is volumetric skybox detail. And it is in the settings. It could be turned to low in the graphics menu to provide a small FPS boost for certain graphics card for their internal testing. So we're going to go back to settings and display. Go down to quality again. And towards the bottom of quality, you'll see skybox quality and you can set this to either low or normal they also talk about the static mesh distance fields and how they kind of clean that up and are optimizing that as well bringing up a ton of system budget which means the system can rely on df to operate correctly which is distance fields so this should help with optimization as well and they also state that any of your feedback on any noticeable differences in the frequency of hitching after this update is much appreciated. And comment down below, guys, if you're having much better frames or performance after this update. We'd love to know as well, especially AMD users. With the UI changes that they've made this week, they have optimized it so it's a little bit easier on your CPU. And they also say they got it down from 3.8 milliseconds to about 1.3 milliseconds for benchmarks, depending on machine specs. And they achieved this by doing a reduction on the HUD or heads up display. And they kind of go on and explain how the changes are going to make the optimizations worth it and effectively halving the time required to draw an effect. They also did a little bit of changes and tweaks to the compass because they noticed it was running slower than they wanted it to and removed a ton of markers that weren't visible to players. Alongside some optimizations this week, they have some feedbacks and balances. These are quality of life improvements that they added to the game and balances you are now granted four blueprint points and one talent point on odd levels and three blueprint points 
and two talent points on even levels. This means that you are getting an additional 15 talent points if you are level 50 and additional blueprint points as well. Anybody who had more than 60 talent points may not receive the extra 15 points. Everyone else will. So once you log on to your level 50 character, if you have one and go to talents, you'll see an extra 15 points available. So this character only had 60 points originally, and we were given an additional 15 points. This does not count for solo though. Solo did not change this week. This is only for multiplayer talents. You get more XP from the skinning bench now. And they made some small changes to the way that the talent ranks look and how they're spaced out. Also, coal is a little bit lighter now from 600 to 500, whatever that means. It's about 40 kilograms. And also all deep mining ore deposits or miners, except the abyss node are 37.5% faster and the electric drill is 33% faster from 25% and increase the slots to 20. They also reduced the weight of pills a lot. Used to be 200, now it's 10, whatever that means. Looks like it's less than 0.1 now. <laughs> you can also now put both bread doughs in the refrigerator and the deep freeze as well as ice boxes and your short range radio and orbital exchange interface as well as radars now must be outside as you see we hover over this and you'll see outside with the red x through it if you try to go into the inventory of it it will say unable to establish orbital uplink ensure it has adequate clearance from local obstructions that just means it needs to be outside and in the open same thing for the oei all you have to do is place them outside and you'll see you can use them now this was mostly due to the fact to the fact that you could go into caves and not spawn wildlife or have any retaliation from doing so and also, you'll need to be able to get to the orbital uplink, so you're shooting up a signal up in the sky. And we also have one of the newest animals to the game, the pronghorn, which is kind of like a cousin to the chamois, but a little bit bigger with antlers and whatnot. And this is what he looks like. And this is the Arctic Scorpion, and it is found in the Arctic areas. Looks a lot like the Armored Scorpion, to be honest with you. And you can see we found it here on the map. So Styx is getting paid. I mean, Styx is going paid. It was always meant to be a paid DLC, and they are now waiting on Valve to make the change so it could happen in any of the coming weeks. If you already had sticks, it still continues to be free for you forever. But new players who are coming into the game after the change will have to buy it. But the great thing about it is, is as long as the one player in your party who is hosting the game or open world has the game, nobody else will need it. Just one person is required to have it who's hosting regardless of ownership status, which is really cool. And Galileo is coming, guys. Finally... The wait is very much almost over, and they have a preview video of Galileo, where they give tons of information on fishing and everything in Galileo. And it's releasing next week. So week 78 Galileo, we're going to watch this video and kind of dissect it for you guys. So here's the video from Icarus, credit Icarus, on Galileo. Hi, I'm Jake Dodansky, project lead on Icarus here at Rocketworks. Today, we're excited to introduce to you our Galileo patch. For those unfamiliar with our new content cadence, this is the first of several larger patches that we've been working on while still releasing smaller weekly updates. This patch includes several exciting features, including fishing, the beastry, steam achievements, and trading cards. Our hero feature of Galileo is the introduction of fishing to Icarus. To go fishing, prospectors will be able to craft a fishing rod from the new fishing bench along with traps and lures. All bodies of water can be fished, from running rivers to the lakes they connect to. 
each water body will contain a different variety of fish, so you will have to go searching to catch them all. Once you've cast your line, you'll be prompted to hook your fish and reel it in. Once hooked, you'll have to keep the fish in the golden zone of this minigame. When the fish is in the golden zone, progress increases. Once the progress reaches 100%, you will reel the fish in. Fish are either saltwater or freshwater and come with a variety of stats, including quality, length, Let's weight, race. and rarity. All fish you catch are recorded in the fishing book, which is part of the beastry record. This can be opened by hitting J on your keyboard. Players can increase the likelihood of catching better fish or different types of fish by using lures. These are also craftable at the fishing bench and provide different stats to your rods. These can be equipped in a very similar way to swapping ammo out on your gun by holding the R key. For players who don't want to actively fish, you can also build fishing traps that are craftable from the fishing bench. These will slowly catch fish that are available within the current location. Though be warned, these also fill up with junk and take far longer than using a rod. If you don't want to use a rod or traps, you can still go and shoot fish or slash them with your knife. Only now you will get fish chunks instead. Fish caught with traps or rods can be taken to the fishing bench and filleted into saltwater or freshwater fillets. All three ingredients can be used in a variety of recipes. Players can also craft new wall trophies and aquariums to show off their prize catches. Our next Galileo feature is the Beastry. This is a journal for prospectors to record what creatures they have encountered on Icarus. As players kill, fall victim to, skin, or craft trophies of, they will uncover more information about that creature. Each encounter with the creature is recorded individually, and as players uncover more information, they will unlock perks related to that creature. Upon first encountering the creature, you learn its name and its biomes. Further encounters lead you to learn unique lore about your foe, its weaknesses, habitats, and even unlock unique perks. Some of these include wolves dropping additional meat, reduction of oxygen consumption, and heat temperature resistance while in the desert. In addition to this, for every 20% you complete of a beastry entry, you gain 1% extra damage dealt and 1% damage reduction taken against that creature. The last big feature is the addition of the Steam Achievements and Steam Trading Cards, along with profiles and emotes that you can now earn while playing Icarus. These have all been hand-drawn and crafted by our art team and come with a range of challenges to unlock. We really hope you enjoy the Galileo patch and look forward to your feedback. So on the screen we see the basic fishing bench, and you can see what the fishing bench looks like, how you craft a rod. Looks like it's going to require just some wood, epoxy, and some rope. And then tons of lures up here that you can craft as well. Once you get the fish, you're going to see the name of the fish, quality, and how to reel it in. And you need to keep this little bar right here over top of the fish, which is pretty cool. A little cool mini game that you have to play to get the fish in. And of course, we got all those different species of fish. This is an electric wraith. We also have the bestiary screen, which gives you bestiary and fishing records and lets you know about those animals, which is pretty cool. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Fallout's Pip-Boy. And they also give us a sneak peek of two fishing traps that we're going to have. The advanced fishing trap and the basic fishing trap. We also get to see some fish on the wall. And looks like we get a void trout and an emerald diano. Diano? And an emerald diano whatever those are, in different sizes. We also get our first actual look at a fish in an aquarium and bobbing around. They also give us a bestiary guide for Olympus and Styx and world bosses and lets you know about those animals. And as you can see at the bottom there, it's called the Prospector Field Guide. And it looks like we're starting out with about 40 achievements in the game for Steam. That's awesome. And of course, all this is coming next week. After all that, we have the change log. We'll go over it briefly. In the community feedback and optimization section, they talk about the new early recipes in the mortar and pestle and material processor, which is one wood to two sap and two spoiled meat to one sap for 100 units of biofill. Be a crime if we didn't show you that. So in the mortar and pestle, you'll notice that you can make tree sap now with one wood it's two tree sap for one piece of wood this is also available in material processor as well 
And they also added in the electric and regular composter, the ability to use spoiled meat and tree sap to make fuel. And it'll give 100 units of fuel. I'll probably keep my spoiled meat and just continue to use sticks, which are quite easy to get, so. And probably keep my spoiled meat for pace and whatnot. They also mentioned a new setting in control, which is called Crouch Ledge Safety. And it toggles off the ability to crouch walk off a ledge if disabled. And if you go to settings and under controls, you'll see the crouch ledge safety. And it's on by default, but you can turn it off if you want to. And right here it says the XP granted by skinning bench is now nine times. And predators will grant slightly more XP when skinned on a bench compared to in the wild. Passive wildlife will grant four to five times more XP when skinned on a bench compared to in the wild. And we're gonna take a really quick look at fix this week. And they mentioned here in the fix section about the AMD GPU cards and how they should be fixed with the lighting settings off. And they did a little work on the solar panel, fixed it up looks like. It updates a little bit more frequently and the change solar panel trace logic to classify no hit as success for enabling power for the instances where the trace misses the sun. And they updated that Steam Rich Presence to support friend grouping. Both the communication boards of the OEI and short range radio no longer take storm damage. And in a future content section this week, we'll go through here and mention anything they haven't already. Looks like they may be working on some more building pieces, maybe? SMBLD Roof Peak Wood and SMBLD Roof Pyramid Hip Single Wood L for Buildable Rework Investigation. I just mentioned a ton about fishing, guys. They're just wrapping it up, finishing it up for next week. Rabbit statue, working on it a little bit. And they mentioned that it is a 50% chance that instead of a shamwall, it's going to be a pronghorn to spawn. And they're working on the first pass of the landmine. And it looks like you're going to be able to right-click a fish and convert it to fish chunks. And they're setting up a tackle box item, which you can store fish and lures. An item could be picked up with items inside and placed down in items retrieved. But in the bone shield audio and the composite shield. And just tons more on fishing. Just tons. Here's something kind of interesting. Fishing rods and lures now degrade on successful fish catch. With no stats, the tier 1 rod should catch 20 fish, tier 2 40, tier 3 80, and lures will degrade every 10. It looks like you'll be able to destroy the benches and lures and repair your fishing rods. And for the first time, they exceeded the character limit for a steam post, and they'll continue in the comments below. Talking about the lava bomber. Looks like players are going to now be granted experience for catching fish. Common, uncommon, rare, and unique all provide different values. And the biofuel consumption in the Tier 3 aquarium was reduced by half. Looks like your fridges, ice boxes, and deep freezers cannot contain caught raw fish. A lava flyer? And it looks like there was a carved wood lamp, but it's now locked. Changed all oxide lamp light sources to be more blue, less cyan. Looks like a landmine will also cause a slow modifier. And fish are now held up in your hand when you equip them. It says here, update decoration candles to use animal fat as fuel. And it looks like you're going to be able to change lures with R. And fish weight will affect how many fillets or chunks you get from the fish. And they kind of give a equation there for it. Adding a fish finder audio and events MBP. So fish finder. So they added several wood buildables for wood buildable tier rework. They're setting up painting frames and paints. So maybe we can get some paints soon. As well as recipes, talents, and icons. And they're adjusting the wording of the heartless achievement so it specifies baby deer and juveniles, excluding bear cubs. And they added floor trap door wood, floor half wood, floor quarter wood, and wood buildable rework. And updated the tier 3 and 4 smoker assets. And guys, that's it for this video. Don't forget, if you like what you see, to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing to the channel will get you weekly Icarus update videos just like this one and content videos whenever they come out. Comment down below if you have a suggestion for our AMMA, and we will send it to the devs and see if they will answer it. And hopefully we'll get that out next week after we do it. And hopefully we'll see you next time. Peace.